Good morning. Um, okay, so today's mostly going to just be like a question and answer session in case y'all have any questions about the uh, either the AP multiple choice homework that I gave y'all or the lab that was just due. Um, since I wasn't able to take these questions yesterday, of course, neither of those will get late assignments. But let me just start off real quick with having us finish up our marking on our AP equation sheet. And this will be the last time we have to do this for the whole year because we now have every equation. And I'm also going to have you all strike off the uh, equations and constants that are for the topics that were removed. So if you all want to take a minute to bust those out. Um, also, I'll upload a PDF of like my version of it right here. Uh, this is all that will be on your guys' AP test when it finally comes around. And just a reminder that the schedule for that comes out in two days on the third. So once that's up, um, I will make a posting about it in classroom. So um, in terms of AP Physics 1, you don't need any of these. Uh, and you don't need these first two because all of these constants are associated with the chapters on electricity. Of the units, we're not going to talk about the amp, the Kelvin, the watt, the coulomb, the volt, the ohm, or Celsius, because all of those are about the stuff uh, having to do with electricity. Everything else on this front page is still in play, though. You still need these uh, prefixes. You still may need these uh, trig functions for common angles. Backside, we now have every single equation because we have all of our common equations of motion. And then down below, we have to add on the period of a spring mass, the period of a pendulum. And then you don't need these two top right boxes at all. Nothing for electricity, nothing for mechanical waves. So you can just delete those two boxes entirely. Uh, are there any questions there on that stuff? No. No? Okay, how about on the uh, lab? Any questions on the lab? Uh, where do we turn that in since there isn't like a lab eight? Do we just do it for the pre-lab? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me make a lab eight assignment to upload it. Mr. Rob, you said uh, since we couldn't ask questions yesterday, if we turn it in tomorrow, is that fine? Yep. Because I, okay. Wait, Mr. Rob? Yeah. Uh, for the lab? Uh, is it just going to be like a standard lab, like the regular, like length of everything, like the conclusion should be like a couple pages and like all that, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There is a spot to upload it. Uh, oops, sorry, one second, let me edit it real quick. I forgot to give it a category, category labs. Okay. Um, hmm, uh, any questions from, or I'm sorry, actually, before I take questions for the homework, let me tell you about the homework. Uh, so tomorrow for the test, I have two free response questions. Free response one is long and it's about a pendulum. Free response two is short and it's about a spring mass. Question one is lab type and then question two is purely theory. Uh, I think this is a good look at in terms of like what kind of AP test you'll be getting. You only have 45 minutes to do it and then you'll have to answer both questions and upload them. I expect y'all to respect academic honesty so don't work together, but uh, so long as you are home, you'll have access to your notes, all that stuff. So whatever resources you can use to help yourself, um, that's just kind of how take home tests are. And then uh, during the test, I expect everybody to be logged on to Zoom. 
just so that if you have a question about the test, um, I can answer it. But for no other reason, I'm not going to have you like leave your webcams on so I can certify academic honesty or whatever. That's too much work. Um, but of course, the thing that I'm grading you on it is the work, not the answers. So make sure that you are very clear with all your thinking and that where appropriate, you explain your work. Cool. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Roth, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for the test, do you want it like written or typed? Or uh, is it written? Or written? Okay. Yeah, so write your work on a piece of paper, and then when you're done, take a picture or scan and upload. Um, yeah, any questions on that stuff? No. Okay, and then were there any leftover questions on the um, multiple choice homework that I gave? Um, if the answer is no, that's cool and we can call it here. Otherwise, do y'all have questions about um, what I'm asking y'all to do before we go to spring break? So wait, are the, is the test and the lab the last two things for like class before spring break? Yeah. And then like that's it and then we just, we'll continue after we come back, right? Yeah, we'll continue with nothing uh, but review, um, some practice AP tests that I'll grade and give feedback on. And then after the AP test, we will cover the content that we missed. Uh, it won't be graded hard, and I won't expect y'all to do that much homework about it. I just want to make sure that you guys get an introduction to it before you see it in college. And then we'll talk about general interest stuff until the end of the school year. Okay. Yeah, it'll just be like, tell Mr. Rob what to talk about, and then he'll make a daily podcast or whatever. Okay. Um... Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I guess, sorry to cut it short, but if that's about it, I'm going to cut out. My stomach's still not feeling great. Uh -oh. um, nowhere near as bad as yesterday, not like dying in the bathroom, but I still just don't feel super good. Um, what did you eat? Uh, just regular stuff, all the same stuff my wife did. I just like uh, like I said, I get food poisoning a couple times a year, even mm -hmm. in cases where me and my wife eat the same food. She just has a way more like robust digestive system, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and normally it only lasts a day, not two, but yeah, I still don't like my stomach doesn't feel great. No fever though anymore. Uh, and also definitely not COVID because I don't have a cough. <laughs> I just like COVID. consumed something bad, maybe like a little bit of botulism or salmonella or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but for real, are there any questions out there? Because other than like right now, this is your last chance to get questions about the lab, uh, the multiple choice or questions for tomorrow's free response answered. Though I guess tomorrow, if you have questions about the free response, you can just ask me during the test. Yeah. Are, are all the videos of the lab on YouTube in case like I missed something? Yeah, but both of the, uh, all three days of the lab include the procedure and the day that, that I did the tutorial on the data analysis, they're all up there. And we just need to like copy, like not copy, but like replicate them and submit it. Uh, yeah, just treat it like you did the lab, not that you didn't like watch me do it. Um, and uh, analyze the data on your own, do your best to, um, do the same type of analysis I did, try and figure out what the damping constants are and then see if it matches in Desmos and then feel free to include uh, that data analysis along with the graph in Desmos, all that stuff, just screenshot it and then turn it in with the lab report. Um, because for the lab report, not only do I want the scans, but if you do any like computer work for it, 
include the files, screenshots, links, whatever like is easiest and most straightforward for you. And I'll include all of that when I grade it. Okay. Mr. Robinson. Yeah. What are you looking for in our abstracts? Like, I don't know. Oh yeah. So um, there are two things that we are trying to verify in this lab. There's the easy thing, which is us verifying that period is equal to two pi root m over k, or period is equal to two pi root l over g. So that should be the first thing in your abstract that we either confirm or refute um, the period equations for spring masses and pendulums. And then the second thing is a little bit harder, but what I would say about it in the abstract is we were able to model the damping of the system or we were not able to model the damping of the system. Um, and whether or not you were able to do that is based on um, whether or not you were able to make the regression work in Excel. And then if you punch that regression equation into Desmos along with the oscillatory motion equation, does it match the data? Does it look right or not? Okay, thank you. Yeah, for sure. That's a good question. Um, are there any other questions out there about the lab report? Oh, also, I guess on the multiple choice, um, when you were done, did it give you the answers? Did it show you the grading? I'm sure it does, but I didn't go back and check. Oh, okay. Um, only wondering because sometimes I forget to click that option. But yeah, make sure you go over the solutions to those questions. I didn't use them to write these, but it's always good to do that, you know, make sure you, you go over what the correct answers were. And like I said, just one more time, since I'm like not writing it down anywhere, um, I'll go ahead and write it down. Yeah. Just like exactly what is on tomorrow's test, because I want y'all to do well at it. Oh, my highlighter is uh, um, Question one. Uh, so chapter 16, free response. Uh, the first question is long, which means that that one is worth nine points. Um, and it is going to be about a pendulum. And it is lab-based. So a scenario is given to you and then you are asked how you would do the procedure and write up the analysis in order to get the number that you want. I'm going to go ahead and warn y'all that there is an element of linearization to this question. Nothing too crazy, but it will ask you what you would have to do in order to make the, the data linear. Um, so if you forgot about linearization, be sure to Google it up so you have some idea what I'm asking about there. And then for question number two, this one is more theoretical. This one is short, so that means that this one is six points. Uh, it is about a spring mass. Uh, and this one is largely theoretical. Uh, so make sure for spring masses, you understand all of the energy transformations. There are two energy equations that are appropriate to a spring mass. We have the standard kinetic energy equation, uh, Ke is equal to one half mv squared, but we also have the potential energy equation for a spring mass one half kx squared. Make sure that you understand how those two apply and where they come in. Um, are there any other questions out there? So how are you? one yes. question, just fifty percent of the grade N no so this is it oh okay it's out of 15 instead of out of 30. Oh, okay and um i believe that these two questions will um not take you the full 45 minutes i think they should take about 30 minutes total okay. uh, and again i they haven't announced yet the official rules about how your ap test will be restructured but what i expect to happen um i think your ap test will probably be this times two. Yeah. I think the actual 45 minute uh, free response only will be like one long and two shorts mm -hmm. uh, or maybe two longs and a short, something like that. And it'll be four very different topics. 
What I expect them to do to try and cover all the bases is there will probably be one standard linear mechanics question. There will probably be one rotational mechanics question. And I, I'm fairly confident that one of the questions will be rotational mechanics, considering that was the first video that they posted under the review section. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think the third question would most likely be um, either a collision question or a, uh, an oscillator. Oh, okay. Um, but that is just my guesses, and I'm going to write for y'all probably two different practice tests. I'll try and get some stuff together that um, models that, but I'm going to wait until the third to get into it, just so that I can have more data before I start typing. Okay, thank you. Yeah, how are y'all holding up out there? What have y'all been up to? Ugh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah. Just going to work. Oh, word. You're a Trader Joe's, right? Yeah. Which one? The Glendale one. Glendale. Oh, right. So the one that's like one shares, Glendale. it shares the parking lot with like a CVS to one side and a Starbucks to the other, or a Pete's. It's Walgreens and Coffee Bean. Walgreens, oh, tight. Yeah, I knew it was a pharmacy and I knew it was a cafe, but I was wrong on both. Um, <laughs> how's that going, dude? Uh, now we have a line outside, so we just limit the amount of people that come in. Oh, okay, that's good. Has it been like crazy busy or regular mm -hmm. busy? The weekends are like the worst days, but it's not that busy anymore. Like we have f full stock now, so that's good. Oh, yeah, that is good. I might come through that way because we, I haven't been to Trader Joe's in a month just because of what a mess it's been. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I need to restock on my like Trader Joe's only goods, Thank like you. the crucial. I don't know if y'all know, but Trader Joe's makes a green chicken burrito, which is like one of the oh, best yeah. frozen food items, period. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, I don't know if y'all saw, but I posted a thing on Google Classroom about the Humble Bundles current deal. Um, if any of y'all play PC, do any of y'all play PC games? I think all of them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, whether or not you play PC games, even if you don't, um, some of these games are, like, good and will run on a laptop. Like, Into the Breach is a really good game that runs on a laptop. Anyway, what the current Humble Bundle is, is it's $1,000 worth of video games for $30. Bucks. Um, and all of the money that you pay goes to um, COVID-19 research and treatment and other charities that are attempting to help with the problem. Uh, and I don't, if you've never bought something from Humble, Bu Humble Bundle, the way that it works is you basically pay for it and give them your email. And then they email you all of the Steam keys individually. So you don't have to redeem all of these on your own account if you don't want to. Like if you have some of these games already or if you don't want all of them, you can split this up with a homie. So I broke this up with my best man, Steven. Uh, I bought it for 30 bucks and then I sent him all the games that I already had. And just on here, and again, you know, Spring Break's coming up. Um, here are my personal recommendations from this. Into the Breach is really good. Undertale is really good. Hollow Knight is really good. Into the Breach is actually amazing. This is one of my favorite games of like the past decade. I have like 500 hours in it. Um, the Witness is pretty good. Super Hot is freaking amazing if you haven't already played it. Lego Batman is, you know, it's good if you like any of the Lego beat em up games. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, Darksiders is fine. It's Legend of Zelda, but not Legend of Zelda. Um, Brothers is really depressing. It's like an hour long and it's a super sad story, which isn't done enough in video games. Um, Psychonauts is really good. It's old. It's obviously showing its age, but it's really good. Pico Nico is brand new, and that's why I'm surprised it's in here because Pico Nico on its own is 15 bucks. So this is like half the value of the bundle. Uh, Super Hexagon is good. You probably already played it on your phone. VVVVVVV is hard, but really fun. Uh, and the other weird thing that comes in this humble bundle that I think is cool is it comes with a bunch of books. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it also comes with some like audio books and some comic books. Uh, it comes with The Boys, which is um, a Netflix series now that is really good. It's about a team of regular dudes who fight superheroes. Um, yeah, this Humble Bundle is like one of the best one in years. I, I would check it out if you play PC games and you're trying to build out your library. <laughs> uh 
any of y'all have any questions about like the state of the world? Or do you feel like you have a decent grasp on that? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Of like, and I mean, y'all, here's, here's, here is, okay. I'm gonna, let me, let me just go ahead and, um, what's the easiest way to do this? The current timestamp is, Oh, I can't read the timestamp in the recording. You know what? Whatever. The current time is 10:57, yeah. which means it's 22 minutes after I hit record. So I'll just cut it there when I put it up on YouTube. Um, yo, you want to know what the craziest way that I've had to think about this whole like global catastrophe is? That just like, you know, the last two weeks feel like it's been a thousand years. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday I was talking to my friend Dan, and. Um, there was a Bernie Sanders rally that we went to in LA where Public Enemy performed. Let me pull up the exact date just because this isn't, what I'm about to say isn't about Bernie Sanders. It's about like the scale of time. Um, so that Bernie Sanders rally was, uh, oh God, why is it so hard to find? a date 